Hi everyone. So today I thought I will look at um, creating different uh, watercolor effects and precisely I want to look at colors and I got inspired by looking at this older piece that I did. So this was just uh, I think paints gray with some um, fine tech gold and essentially uh, it was sort of wet on wet dry uh, sorry wet on dry um, and then dipping some water creating some blooms etc so that's something that I will try to do today uh, but with colors and I want the colors to pop so I will use um, colors that will uh, look good together and for that, I think I will use this palette here, which is the custom-made palette that I made myself. It's called, um, well, I called it a candy box because it's just super bright and it was like the perfect uh, palette for summer, but also for days like today when it's sunny outside and gorgeous, I feel like doing some colors. So basically over here I have the core, um, the high chroma uh, swatched out and that actually helps me a lot because of these six colors I can uh, see which color will look good with which color I even highlighted those that I liked so for example queen gold with the queen magenta looks gorgeous or queen magenta with cobalt teal etc etc this this green looks gorgeous it's a green gold with cobalt teal now that helps me a lot to also eliminate colors that will create more neutral kind of muddy colors which i do not specifically like um, to be next to bright colors i like them separately when the color scheme is quite um um, small so if it only would be a few neutral colors that would work well for me but otherwise if I could I would always separate the bright colors and the neutrals now let's have a look so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a few techniques today so I'm going to start with wet by wet so so this is the Tim Holtz distress sprayer and I will use it today I mean by no means do you need to go and buy a spray bottle um, but I did buy it it's only a few pounds so it's not that expensive I love how it feels in my hand it's perfect it's not too big I don't like too big I don't like too small and the spray feels really comfortable and the other thing that it does it has um, lock and unlock button which is great for when you have toddlers around uh, that want to constantly push buttons and uh, you know open shampoo bottles and whatnot so yeah um, I'm going to start by spraying um, so there we go also I sprayed the palette a little bit to get the colors ready and I'm going to do a bit of watercolor magic just by dabbing in um, the you can see how beautifully it just sprays uh, or not sprays spreads so you can um, add a little bit more on top as you go and to the point where it starts drying up and then it will stop moving but that's how you can do this and obviously using the spray bottle is very different to um, just wetting the area by doing a wash with your brush because the spray obviously kind of creates that sort of you know different shape <clears throat> that you would never be able to do with a brush so I'm happy with this now I will go into maybe the orange or not the orange no let's see um I quite like that green so I think I'm going to go into this green here some of the areas like I said they'll start drying up and rather than mixing they will be just doing this so then you can mix on top of the paper like so 
just by adding the yellow again and that takes the harshness away now this I can see has already dried up so I will try to just create a wash like that now I'm going to go into this green which is a core green gold it's a beautiful color and I will add it in these areas that are still a little bit wet and then let's see I might go into this which is the cobalt core and just play around with it you can see all you need to do is just have brush water and paper and obviously watercolors and the rest is all done by itself isn't it just gorgeous let me just zoom you in a touch just so you can see better so there's a big puddle here which um, will take a time will take some time to dry but I can still keep on going back and forward without creating mud because these colors are beautiful uh, and you just need to study which colors create mud and avoid them in this sort of situation so if I started going with like you know an orange into green uh, that is likely to create something quite unpleasant so at this point I'm trying to think oh I've got the green appetite which is the Daniel Smith color that spreads into this electric green so I'll just add it in a few places uh, to see the beauty of it you really need a lot of water so I think I'm just going to try it uh, uh, we'll try to help it a little bit <clears throat> and what else can we do I'll take a bit of uh, yellow again and just Um, I also have some quinacridon deep gold. I wonder how that will work. I hope it's not going to be too too much. No, that actually works quite beautifully. Mm -mm. So you want to create interest just by layering and playing around. Just let your kind of brush, um, let your brush guide your wrist more than the other way around. So I'm just, I'm even going to touch it on the dry areas, but very lightly just to create some sort of patterns which um, might just add a little bit of a breakdown in interest really and then wherever you don't like it just go over it no one is judging you no one is looking over your shoulder and <laughs> telling you what not to do so that was quite good I do like that so I'm just going to add this color here and there but not too much because then it stops being special when there is too much of a color that looks great I'm going to actually neutralize this a little bit more okay so I think I'm quite happy and I will stop at this and um, <clears throat> I can um, you know something like this you can easily frame and put into frame and and let everyone enjoy it because there is this isn't something specific so when you look at it you could see a lot of things um but nothing specific like it's not a flower or you know it's not uh, a certain illustration of a certain object so you just let people's imagination go wild and quite often um it's very very interesting one thing i have to say i feel like um it's sort of like two objects almost where i want to add something here almost 
separate to the rest. So I'm going to go ahead and just spray this and move it with a brush a little bit more just to spread it out. And I'm going to add the yellow into this. And I'll just connect it a bit more up here, like so. And I'll just try to give it a bit of a softer edge here on the side. I basically do exactly what i just done here. Um, just add some colors and have fun with it. Exactly the same colors that I used just before that. Um, I'm just making sure I do it while it's still wet. And <clears throat> um, let's see, so this one would look good here. Yes, I think we're almost there. I just need just a little bit of something. Okay, so this is where I'm happy to stop now. I feel that it looks really good. So that like a little trio here that I would be happy to hang on a wall. Um, so yeah, let me just quickly try and lift this Nicolazzi yellow, which I find to be incredibly staining. So that's something to keep in mind. Let me try that eradicator brush from uh, Billy Shawl. One thing I wanted to say as well, um, I realized something that a while ago, I think I told you that um, the, I thought it was something wrong with the watercolors, but it's the paper. So it's the tiger paper that I'm using. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's from a shop called Tiger. I purchased mine in Cambridge, but there are loads of other um, shops there throughout the UK and um, yeah so it kind of settles weirdly on this paper but it doesn't do it on any other paper so it's definitely related to paper and just before filming this uh, video I've done another one I'm not going to show you because I hate the colors <laughs> and it's done exactly the same um, weirdness that it did here in these swatches so yeah I'm not seeing it on this particular paper uh, on this particular piece but uh, it can happen so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to let it settle and dry naturally because um, these little puddles look very nice I could lift them but I actually quite like where they are situated so um, that is it I might wait for it to dry completely and show you what it looks like when it's finished but you can see that in very quick time very little time you can create something abstract that is very beautiful and fun to look at and it's very organic so I just wanted to share something with you I have lifted in this two three four five areas uh, this the little puddle so I was just impatient and then what I decided to do is just um, use very little water and then kind of wet the area and add the cobalt turquoise on top and it just looks so gorgeous so I'll show you how I do it so I've done it in these one two three areas and I want to do it here as well so I'm just wetting the paper ever so slightly and then dabbing on the cobalt and you look uh, you can see how fresh it looks and it just like such a nice little technique that I just um, decided to try now. I really never have done this before. It's sort of like glazing really, but I have never glazed on top of a lifted area and it just looks gorgeous. So like I said, not too much water and then just adding the fresh watercolor on top. And then just kind of on the edges, work with the tip of the brush a little bit. And that is it. And it just looks great. 
doesn't it? So I hope you enjoyed this uh, little tutorial of how to have fun with watercolors. So thanks for watching and see you soon. Mason came running to say see you soon. Okay, say bye-bye. See you bye.